Hello Taurus viewers. So I'm going to see what the situation is now. So this could be love, money, career. It's just whatever the cards want to say. Whatever the story is. As always, if you would like a private reading, just email me. My email is right below in the description box below this video. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. Donations are appreciated. My donation links are below. And please like, share, and subscribe if this resonates. Let's see what's going on. The world. The Eight of Pentacles. Two of Wands. The Three of Wands. The Five of Pentacles. The Fool. The Ace of Swords. The Ten of Cups. Okay. So lots of really good energy here. The Star. Clarify this, um, this energy on the top. Right here, too. Page of Swords. The Wheel. The Queen of Cups. So this first message is it's partially about love, but it's more about money and fine and uh and career or something that you've been working hard towards. So I'm gonna just get into this message really quick and then I'm gonna pull some cards regarding love as well for you guys. So we're gonna do a couple different sets here. But this first one is there's a lot of cards here about wrapping up a karmic cycle. We've got the wheel here, we've got you know, we've got the world. Eight of Pentacles is all about focusing on something. I'm hearing a lot of birds outside. There could be something with birds for this group as well. Um animals being drawn to you right now. The Eight of Pentacles is someone that's studying. It's someone that's working on themselves. It's someone that, you know, someone that's going to school or they, they're they studying um, the occult or some kind of specific area of, of uh, knowledge that they're trying to, they're trying to get to that next level. Two of Wands is, Two of Wands and Three of Wands. This is someone who's looking at a long-term approach so I feel like some of you are wondering if your ships are ever going to come in. It's like you've been putting in the work, especially with the star here. It's like you've been planting the seeds for a while and you're wondering why it's just not coming in for you. It's like you've been doing the work. You've been, you know, you've been trying to get to that point, but you feel like you're still in, in debt. Like you might have like student loans or debt or financial issues. This could also be like anxiety, feeling lost, feeling alone, not knowing how to move forward. I find it interesting that you get out of this energy so quickly because the fool is all about a brand new start and this is clarity in communication. So it's almost like you're going to have some kind of epiphany that's going to allow you to have this new start. It's almost like everything is just going to make sense all of a sudden and you're going to be like, it's like getting out of the eight of swords energy. Like you just simply step right out of the eight of swords. You're just like, oh, wait a minute. I... This was self-imposed entrapment. Like, I wasn't actually trapped, but I thought I was. You know, this is someone that just, like, wakes up and they just they just recognize something. It's like they have some kind of, this is, like, clarity, epiphanies, communication. Because I feel like you're getting out of this Five of Pentacles energy. Like, you've been in this energy, this Five of Pentacles, you know, anxiety or, you know, confusion or financial issues. And it's like you're coming out of this energy very quickly. Um, some of you might have an off offer from someone that's wealthy, like you might have a potential suitor that has a lot of money that wants to kind of help you and support you. You could also be getting a grant or a loan or something that's just going to help you like some kind of, I feel like some of you are going to have um, some kind of financial blessing coming in. I also feel like this could be for some of you, this could be your person where it's like your person was an eight of swords kind of energy and they were trapping themselves and they're going to have some kind of epiphany. And they're going to realize that all they have to do if they want their Ten of Cups with you, if they want, you know, like with the star card here, planting seeds, you know, having hope. If they want this Ten of Cups, all they have to do is is communicate with you. 
and move forward. So for some of you, you know, take it as it resonates. For some, this is your person's ending a cycle. They've been procrastinating and studying and focusing on other things and being overly logical and just trying to trying to see the bigger picture and trying to see things in a long-term approach. And something is going to come in that's going to make them realize, you know, now is the best time. There's, it's never going to be perfect. Nothing is ever going to be perfect. It's like they've been procrastinating with this connection and, and some of them might just, you know, come very quickly out of this anxiety energy. Just They might just decide, you know, what it's time for a new start. It's just interesting how quickly someone is jumping from the Five of Pentacles to the Fool and the Ace of Swords and the Ten of Cups and the Star. It's like all this really good energy coming out of this kind of negative unwanted energy. So this could be your person having an epiphany. I could take it that way as well, where it's like your person's been, you know, I could see it as a warning for some that your person might be coming back to you for money. Like they might be in, in financial stress and they might be trying to come back to you to hustle you. That's only for a couple of you. That's not for the majority of you, but just for two or three of you, I'm feeling that energy. Um, but I mean, the Five of Pentacles is, is also someone that just has anxiety. It's like someone that's kind of like trapped in their head a little bit. Someone that just feels like they're left out in the cold. And then it's like someone's just going to have this realization. Someone's making, someone's ending karmic cycles here. So they're going to have this realization that they can have the new start that they want. So like I said, for some, that's your person coming back around. For others, you're ending a toxic cycle. You're the Queen of Cups, you know, male or female. You know, you're you're in this really intense energy with the Page of Swords. And we have the Ace of Swords here as well. It's like you're in this energy where you're ending these karmic cycles. You know, we have the World and the Wheel card. There's, both those cards talk about completion and ending some kind of cycle. So for some of you, you're letting someone go. And this person, it's like, it's like once you let them go, you have everything you ever wanted coming in. Because it's like some of you are holding on to some kind of karmic cycle and you weren't learning the karmic lesson. So it kept repeating. But now some of you are kind of going inward and you're studying and you're focusing on the long-term approach more. So like I said, there's a couple different stories here. So take, you know, take what resonates. There's different variations of this story, even though it's the same general energy, you know, could be you or your person. But, but yeah, it's like someone's ending a karmic cycle here, whether this is your person ending a karmic cycle and having an epiphany and, and like a psychic awakening and realizing, oh, wow, I'm like my true love is right in front of my face. But for others, it's you ending a karmic cycle with, with a karmic partner and you're studying and you're focusing on yourself. Maybe you're taking exercise classes or you're um, like going to the gym or working on your body or working on, um, you know, like your goals, your finances, things that you want to study, like learning tarot, just that kind of stuff. You know, you're focusing on the long term. And some of you are like wondering if your ships are ever going to come in because it's like you're trying to, you know, get ahead and and you've been, you know, still having the anxiety and still having the the sleepless nights and the confusion and feeling left out in the cold and still, you know, trying to fight and trying to fight to get the life that you want. But I feel like some of you are going to have some kind of epiphany here that, you know, you have like a psychic vampire, you have someone that's been holding on to you. And it's like, once you end, once you learn the karmic lesson and end that cycle and do the cut and clear ritual and just kind of free yourself, you're going to have this new start. And it's like, you have, it's not even like eight of cups, nine of cups. It's like 10 of cups. Like you go straight from this energy to new start, clarity, epiphanies, like, like a new perspective, like a, a heightened level of understanding. This could be like a, I could see this as like a psychic awakening for you or your person as well. Like something just clicks. It's like you have like a new, like you just see the world in a different way. It's like you just have like this whole new mindset and you have the 10 of cups, you know, you have this energy that you've been trying to manifest for so long, finally coming into fruition. There's just like this one final block and it's like you're going to wake up one day and you're going to get it. And it's like, oh, shit, like I could have ended this a long time ago. And then you free yourself and you have, you know, the love that you've been asking for coming in. Yeah, reward for hard work, nine of pentacles, you know, reaping, reaping your rewards. This is, this is harvest. Four of pentacles, three of pentacles. I see someone wanting to build with you, but like I said, for some of them, for some of you, this person wants to use you financially. Someone's coming out of stagnant energy, though. That's what I'm getting very strongly. There's an emperor here, or an empress coming out of stagnant energy. There's an emperor and a queen of swords, so this is a very powerful couple. Look at that. I think this is the same. It looks like the same woman on both cards. It looks like this blonde woman is the same woman on both cards as well. 
I almost see that as someone as like that's like you're in Queen of Swords energy because maybe this person hurt you, so it's like you do miss them and you do want them back, but you're in Queen of Swords energy, so it's it's like like you're kind of guarded and strong. Like both of you are very strong, both of you are very guarded. So maybe you, there was like mutual pain here, or maybe they're kind of maybe maybe you didn't even hurt them, but they're playing the victim and they're feeling like you hurt them, even if you didn't intend to. Maybe this is just someone that likes to play the victim sometimes, like they're kind of a big baby sometimes. Um, or like they expected, maybe they felt entitled to your energy. Like they thought you were always going to be around. And now that you're not around, it's almost like they feel like they're the victim. Like how dare she take her energy back? You know, male or female, take it as it resonates. There's no assigned gender here. So if I say female, but you know, it's, it's for you and you're a male, just, just go with it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's no, there's no specific gender, but I'm getting that this queen of swords, it's like this person is guarded because this emperor hurt them. You know, this person isn't allowing anyone to to drain their energy anymore. This person's being more logical about things. This person's guarding their heart more. This person's just kind of standing in their power, too, and making sure that they only allow the right people in their lives. You know, they're not going to be used again. They're not going to be taken for granted again. And this emperor is very pouty because I feel like he really took this queen of swords for granted. And he really got, he, it, I just get like a, like the energy I channel from it is just like a sense of entitlement. Like he really felt like he's entitled to her energy. Like he really has this sense of like, like she'll always be around. I can come back whenever I want. Like she'll always baby me. She'll always mother me. She'll always pick up the pieces. Cause it's almost like you're setting boundaries with this person and this person is like, it's like he's still looking at you. This looks like the same woman on both cards. Like he's still looking at you, but he's wanting to jump right to let's pretend like all this drama and everything I did never happened. Let's pretend like I never broke your heart, never chose a third party, never left you, never said that thing I said, never did this, never did that. Let's just jump right to the Nine of Pentacles, which is, you know, abundant success, like reward. Like, he wants you, but he wants to jump right to the Nine of Pentacles. He wants to jump right to the good parts. You know, it's like he needs to acknowledge that you're the Queen of Swords for a reason. You, He did this. You're not, you didn't just, you were the Queen of Cups before. Yeah, they, like, here's the Queen of Cups right here. You used to be the Queen of Cups. Now you're the Queen of Swords because, you know, this person let you down or this person broke your heart. So now you're more guarded. You're not, you're not... You know, it, it's a karmic lesson you had to learn as well about, you know, as an empath, being more protective of your energy and, and not allowing narcissists and psychic vampires and the like in, you know, being mindful about who you give your energy to and what you give your energy to. And now you're giving your energy to yourself and to, you know, your hobbies and your goals and, and career goals and all those, all those things. Um, so it's almost like he's like, this man wants to come back male or this female, like I said, male or female, you know, no specific gender here. This, this person that's an emperor energy does want to return to you, but they don't want to deal with your boundaries. They know they can feel this energy. They can feel that you have boundaries. They can feel that you're not going to tolerate the same things that you tolerated before with them, that you're a lot stronger now. You're a lot wiser. You're smarter. You know, what they did to you, the betrayal, whatever it was that happened between you two, it really changed you. It helped you learn to find a balance between being the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Swords. Because before, I think you were just the Queen of Cups, where you just kind of wore your heart on your sleeve and you just gave all of yourself to everybody you put everybody else first and put yourself last and this situation taught you to put yourself first sometimes you know to 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 love yourself and and conserve your energy and be mindful of who you give your energy to you know what i mean like you, you're realizing that as an empath you still have to have a balance you still have to be strong and logical and you know not give in to crocodile tears and pity parties and people that will just drain and drain and drain your energy and never give you anything in return. So this Queen of Swords is doing the inner work. She's doing the shadow work. She's cutting out the toxic people. She's she's changing her perspective. She's learning to come into the world as an empath, but in a different way. It's like she has this empathy. She still has her light. She still has her her big heart. She still has this love for people and for animals, but she's not giving to the narcissist and psychic vampires anymore. She's more protective of her energy and her safe space now. And this emperor doesn't want to see that. He doesn't want to see... 
it's almost like he used to gaslight you or something and he doesn't want to like he knows you're in this defensive energy i almost feel like he feels guilt as well and he doesn't want to deal with the queen of swords energy because that means he has to be accountable for what he's done. And I think that some of you are planning this energy. You're planning this out. You're like, you know what? If he comes back, I'll, I'll be open to it. But I'm going to tell him. I'm going to set these boundaries. I'm going to tell him how it's going to be. You know, and this emperor feels that. And for some, that's why they're they're taking so long to return. But, you know, you're in your power. And you need, to, you need to stay true to yourself above all else. Because, you know, you deserve to have those boundaries. You need to keep those boundaries firm. So you are doing the right thing, definitely. You're doing the right thing by having those boundaries, you know, stick to those boundaries. But I'm getting that the emperor feels that energy. He feels, he knows that something's shifted. Maybe, maybe your mutual friends are talking or something. And he just, he just has this sense that like, like he wants to come back, but he knows, he knows you're not going to make it too easy for him. He knows that there's going to be more of a challenge. And he's like, it's like, he's wanting to have his cake and eat it too. He's wanting to come back, but he wants to skip right to, the abundance, right, to, you know, let's pull some more cards to see what's going on. And like I said, if this is your reading and you want a private reading, just email me. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com, but you can just check the description box right below this video and just copy and paste that email. Any donations are appreciated. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment. You know, it really boosts the videos and maybe someone else on your page needs to hear this message. So, you know, I appreciate you guys. I'll put these cards up, actually. Yeah, you're not nostalgic anymore. I feel like you, you used to be nostalgic. Or I could also see this as he's tired of being nostalgic. Like, he's been nostalgic over you and he's ready to get in this emperor energy. It's like a mix of good and bad energy because on one hand, I think that he kind of thought that you were going to come back to him. I think that he thought that it would be the way it used to be and, and that you would... Because I think that I remember like the reading I did a couple weeks ago where I was getting that with this emperor, I feel like you kind of used to baby him. Like you used to, you know, he would he would screw up and you would be like, oh, baby, it's okay. Like, I love you. You know, because you have such a big heart and it's good to have a big heart. Like, don't don't shut your heart down. You know what I mean? Like, it's really good to have a big heart. You just also have to be strong and logical and read people and realize you know, when there's a red flag there, realize when you're being used and drained and put yourself first and, and conserve your energy. You know, you can't just give and give and give to everyone. You have to give to yourself too. You have to take time out to heal yourself and rest and, you know, restore that light inside yourself. Otherwise you're just going to drain yourself. You're just going to feel empty in the end. So you have to be more mindful of your energy and you're doing that, which is a really beautiful thing. You're, you're the queen of swords and the queen of cups. You're the best of both worlds. You're in this temperance energy where you're learning to find that balance. You know, I think maybe in the past you went from extremes like letting everybody in and shutting everybody out, letting everybody in, shutting everybody out. And now you're finding that balance. You're like, okay, I'm going to let some people in. I'm going to let the right people in and I'm going to shut out the people that are bad for me. Like you're, you're finding that balance finally. You're realizing it's not logical to shut everybody out, but it's also not logical to let every single person you meet in either. So you're finding a really beautiful balance and you need to stay true to that no matter what this person says or does. Because some of you, this person did gaslight you. Um, some of you, this was like your empathy got the best of you and this was part of that attraction to this relationship. I feel like... Yeah, I feel like this person's been waiting for you to come back around. I feel like they've been expecting you to go back to being the Queen of Cups. 100%. Like, they're they're not used to you being in Queen of Swords energy. So they kind of expected that eventually you would cave and you would baby them and you would ask how they're doing. I feel like you're very nurturing with them. So they feel like maybe some of them are even acting out right now because they're trying to get your attention. Like, some of them are, are going down a self-destructive path because they're trying to get that motherly energy out of you again. Or fatherly energy, male or female. Take it as it resonates. But it's like someone's trying to get that energy out of you again. Like some, so some of them are like drinking or doing drugs or they're partying or they're just being very self-destructive. Um, like partying all the time. I mean, it's not, it's not self-destructive to party, you know, but like someone that's doing it all the time when they're like making themselves sick, they're drinking so much. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a different energy than just someone that's going out for a few drinks and having fun. Um... But some of them are, yeah, some of them are like doing things that they used to do, like being self-destructive because they're trying to pull your energy back in. They're thinking like, okay, well, shit, I keep thinking she's going to message me any minute now, but she hasn't. She's not. She's not caving like she usually does. She's not 
asking me how I am. You know, she's not blowing up my phone like she used to. She's not pouring her heart out to me like she used to. She's not reassuring me and trying to convince me of our love like she used to. So some of them are trying to be self-destructive because they're like, well, that will get that motherly, fatherly energy back, you know, like... I'll be self-destructive. And then I bet she's going to ask, you know, I bet if I post this on social media or if I act like this or if I tell mutual friends I'm going through it and I'm depressed, I bet she's going to reach out and ask how I am because that's what she's done every single time in the past. And this time you're not doing it. Like you might know about it. Like your mutual friends might be telling you or might be, you might be, you might just have some kind of knowledge that they're being self-destructive. Maybe they know that you're psychic and they know that you can feel it. Like they're trying to drink a lot because they know that you can feel their pain. They know that you can feel it when they drink. Like, maybe in the past you've said things, like, like you just kind of sense... I'm getting, like, for some of you, not for all of you, but for a few of you, it's like when this person used to drink or used to do certain things in the past, like, you would feel it. Like, you would just kind of intuitively know. Like, you would message them. Maybe you didn't even know that you knew it, but it's like you would just message them and be like, hey, I had, like, a feeling or something. Are you Are you okay? Are you doing okay? And, like, little did you know this person was, like, drinking a lot or this person was depressed or having an anxiety attack when you messaged them. So now they're, like, doing those things to try to, like, get that to... Because they, they understand that there's some kind of psychic connection here between the two of you. A very strong psychic connection. So they're like, well, maybe if, I, if I'm if i self-destructive and I do this and this and this like I used to, maybe she's going to feel it. Maybe he or she is going to feel it. And, you know, they're, they're going to message me. And they're going to ask how I am. So, like, this person is trying to make you worry about them is what's coming through very strongly. Like, they're trying to... They're trying to make you worry or they're trying to make you, they're trying to push you back into that motherly or fatherly role. They're trying to make you chase them and you're not doing it. You're staying in your power in the Queen of Swords. You might be very worried about them. It's totally possible that you are feeling this energy. You are worried. You are worried they're depressed or anxious or drinking or doing this or that or, you know, sleeping around. It's totally possible that you are worried and that you are very upset over this, that you are crying over this, but you're still going to stay in your Queen of Swords energy no matter how much it hurts. You're still not going to give in to this person. Like, you know better now. You know that you deserve more than this. Like, you're finally realizing your worth and realizing who you are and what you deserve. So, for some, it's like this emperor is almost a little bit bitter now because he's like, damn, like, I did all this and she's still, like, what do I have to do? Why isn't she feeling it? So, he's having this recognition that he's going to have to be the first one to reach out. Like, it's finally starting to hit him. Like, that nothing he does to pull on your energy. Because there's a lot of psychic things he's doing to pull on your energy. For some, he's doing witchcraft on you. For others, he's meditating on you. He could be... There's, like, a trick, I know, that, like, where you, like, pull cards and, like, try to make the make the cards, like, what you want to happen. And you, you do... There's some kind of spell or something. For some, I'm getting that he's doing that. Um, or he's just, like... It, it might not be something he's conscious of. It might just be, like, oh, in the past, I know she's felt when I was upset, so I'm going to be upset again to try to pull her energy back. Like, he knows, he, he might not understand what it is exactly, but he does know that there is a psychic connection there, even if he doesn't understand, like, how that works. Does that make sense? It's like, he understands that there's something deeper going on behind the scenes with this connection. So a lot of these emperors are realizing that, you know what, they pulled on your energy and you're not, you're not caving, so they're going to have to message you first. But they want to just pretend like you're not in Queen of Swords energy. They just want to skip ahead to the good part. And they're trying to figure out, like, how do they just skip right ahead to the good part? How do they avoid your boundaries? How do they how do they slide past these boundaries? How do they slide past their guilt? How do they pretend like the past didn't happen, you know? How do they just... They want to sweep it under the rug, you know? Like, they're realizing that they're going to have to message first. But they're still being kind of stubborn about how they message. So it's almost like you might get a message... But it's, it might be like a half-assed message, to be honest. It might be like, like, it's like someone apologizing and being like, I'm sorry you pushed me to cheat on you. Like, something stupid like that for some of you. Or just like, hey, how you been? Like, and you know that they need to say more. You know that they need to apologize. This person hates apologizing. Like, they know they owe you an apology, but they hate apologizing. Like, they, it like physically hurts them to say the words, I'm sorry. Like, they cannot, like, fathom it. Like, they can't. They can't do, they don't know how to say sorry. Yeah, it's going to take strength, but they, I mean, they do want to fight for this. They do want to be public with you. Um, five of Cups, what is the Five of Cups doing here? Yeah. 
Yeah, because you let them go, and they feel that. You let this ship sail away even though it hurt you, because you know what you deserve. You know that you deserve more than this. You know, it's like a battle, but now this person's wanting to come back around because they feel like you let them go. And you have choices, though. They thought they had choices. Nah, you have choices. Because intuitively, some of you are picking on someone else, uh, up on someone else's, sorry. Intuitively, some, some, I swear to shit. Intuitively, some of you are picking up on a new person's energy. Now, this might not be someone that you've met yet. This could just be someone in your energy field. This could also be someone that you're manifesting. You know what I mean? Like, you might, I, I feel like you're changing. I feel like this connection changed you. And now you're looking at things in a different way and you're like, wait a minute, like, like at first it was almost like a fake it till you make it energy. Like you were just trying to convince yourself you were over this person. You were trying to, you know, like you were trying to focus, like you kept like telling yourself, you know, I deserve more, but it's like, now you believe it. Like you told yourself you deserve more for so long and you didn't believe it at first, but now you finally do art. You're finally starting to believe it. You're finally starting to understand that you're finally, you're getting to this point where you're like, oh damn, maybe I really don't want this person anymore. Like. You thought that was like your end all be all and now you're kind of looking ahead and you're like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You know, I feel like you're kind of at a crossroads where you have some really important decisions to make and you need to use your intuition here. There might be things hidden as well about this person because the moon is all about secrets. It's about things that are hidden. So this emperor, you know, it's going to be different for each one of you. Like I said, if you want a private reading, I can go more in depth into like what the specific secrets are. Because like I said, there's so many different stories here. It's like there's different secrets. For some, it's cheating. For some, it's... It's their past. Some of them, I'm getting some of them have like a history of like fraud or blackmail or like um, like money laundering or like something illegal. Um, like I'm getting something with cars. Like I don't know if it's like stealing cars or like like something like something with fraud is kind of what I'm getting. Not for all of you, but just for a couple people. I'm feeling like there's some kind of illegal past here. And you know, you need to use your intuition because there are things that are hidden and you need to recognize that the moon the moon is all about i mean it's about secrets it's about things being hidden it's also about using your intuition so i feel like you need to use your intuition when you make this decision you know what i mean like don't because this person knows this the way that this person gets in is by playing on your empathy they play on your motherly or fatherly nature so you need to be mindful because this person might come at you like you know, I've been lost without you. I'm so depressed without you. Like, I just can't, can't breathe without you. And they're going to try to play on your romantic nature. And you need to be strong and you need to be smarter than that. And you need to recognize and use your intuition and realize what's going on when this conversation comes in. Because for some, this conversation is going to be manipulative. It's not, because I'm, I'm seeing a conversation coming in because this man, this emperor here is recognizing that you're not going to message them first. But I just feel like the, the conversation, like they're looking for a loophole because they don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to deal with you being in queen or king of swords energy. They don't want to deal with that. They want you to go back to being the queen or king of cups. They don't want to deal with you being the queen or king of swords. You know, they want to have their cake and eat it too. Some of them want to communicate with you, but they're fine. They're looking for a loophole. They're looking for something they can say to, you know what I mean? Like, like a half-ass apology, like... Like just, I don't know. There's just, there's just an off energy about it. So when you get this message, please use your intuition. Don't just dive back into something. Don't believe the crocodile tears. Don't feel bad for them just because they're alone. Like, you know, they did this to themselves and you need to remember that. And you also need to recognize that you do have choices. You know, you can manifest somebody new. Some of you are manifesting someone new because you're ending this karmic cycle with this person. And with maybe you've dated a lot of people like this in the past, like being an empath. Maybe you have a history of dating narcissists and emotionally unavailable people. Um, and now you're learning to to balance the Queen of Cups and Queen of Swords energy. So you're learning how to be an empath, like I was saying. You're learning how to be an empath, but also be logical and strong and protect your energy and protect your home and your sacred space at the same time you know what I mean like you're not letting people come live with you for two weeks and sleep on your couch anymore you're not you're not driving to pick up Becky an hour away in the middle of the night anymore you're not doing it anymore you're you're putting yourself first finally which is a really beautiful thing don't let anyone convince you otherwise it's it's long past time that you put yourself first but um but yeah, some of you, it's it's like some of you are ending this karmic cycle. So you can have a brand new cycle with somebody new if you want, you know, like you can manifest someone new. I think you're learning to do that. 
with the Seven of Cups, it's basically saying you do have options. Like this person might want to make you feel like you don't have options or maybe like they maybe they said things to make you feel that or maybe just like in your head you're like, well, I don't want to be alone. But it's like the universe is saying, no, no, use your intuition. You do have options, you know. You can manifest somebody new if you want. Like if you want to end this karmic cycle and open up to new, you know, you can do that. You don't have to stay stuck with this energy anymore. It's up to you. Because, yeah, they're going to communicate is what I'm feeling for most of you, but but it might not be everything you expect. Yeah, Ten of Pentacles and the Magician. You can also manifest abundance with career and finances and everything. Like, you got good energy coming in because you found that balance. This is why you're the Magician. You are the Magician because you're finally balancing the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Swords energy. Now, before, you were always you were just the Queen of Cups, so you didn't have that energy of, like, being able to, to be... The Queen of Swords, like logical and strong and grounded and not letting people take advantage, you know, but you need both. You need the intuitive, emotional, mature nature of the Queen of Cups, too. You know, you can't just be the Queen of Swords, but you're learning to balance these energies, you know, with the temperance here. So you're you're becoming your best self and this is turning you into the magician. Basically, the world's your oyster. You can decide to wrap up this karmic cycle and manifest somebody new and also manifest the money and abundance you've been trying to manifest. Yeah, new start. New start. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, some of you might want to move on because this person hasn't been communicating. You've got a passionate, fiery new start. You do. But the choice is yours, you know, use this intro, into, use, I'm sorry, use your intuition when you get this message though, okay? Don't, don't fall back into old patterns, okay? Um, like I said, if you guys want a private reading, just email me. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, donations are appreciated. I thank you guys so much for watching.